these initiatives are extremely important for the very simple reason that, um, as you can see from the depiction of the multi qualifications framework, and in fact, from every qualification framework, um, it is not an easy concept and it is not an easy structure. It cannot be. In, in no country is it an easy structure um, because uh, there are a lot of variables involved. Um, it encompasses the entire education system and therefore um, there is a lot to teach students and there is a lot um, for us adults uh, and you know experts in the field to be acquainted with. Um, we are here because the MFHEA has prepared um, some educational material which is now available online on uh, the website of the MFHEA. I will be sharing in a bit the link in the chat section. Um, everything I will be referring to will be available very easily downloadable just from this uh, website. Um, all the resources are purposefully saved in doc files, not PDFs, so that the teachers can use them, change them, adapt them, like any teaching resources resource needs needs to go through. And that is a major expertise of all teachers to get the resources they need and see that they adapt them to, um, for their classes. Now, before we start going through uh, the teaching material and the lesson plan. Um, there are four important considerations that need to be made very clear. Uh, none of these will surprise you. I'm sure that since um, all of the content contendents here are um, have, an, have a background in education or are education experts, uh, you are aware of these, but uh, we need to remind them to give a context to what we're doing. First of all, this is um, um, the material that is uploaded and what I will be presenting here are lesson plan, are a lesson plan. But as you know, um, there are there is no standard template for lesson planning. Every teacher is a professional. That is the, the, the local Maltese of approach and the official one. And is entitled to develop his or her own teaching tools. So the following is just one format out of a possible thousand formats on how any teacher can develop his own or her own teaching material <coughs> in the best way that you know that every person, every educator, every professional sees fit. So that's one. Now uh, we need to keep in mind when we are going through the tasks here that there are. So this is intended for a form five class, uh, what now we call year eleven, but. There are many year 11 classes of many different levels. We are aware of the concept of learner variability. And classes vary a great deal between one another. So we need to keep in mind the differences between form five year 11 students. Um, in different schools, so for some teachers, this lesson may be incredibly difficult. When they keep in mind their own classes. For others, this will look just right. For others, it may be seen as rather easy. Again, I'm going back to my first argument. Teaching resources need to be adapted depending on the class in front of you. Point three, teachers resources, resources are all, always need to be adapted. No previously prepared planning can ever fit any class perfectly. So you may need to remove material from the material we will be covering in this hour. You may need to add material. You may need to simplify. You may need to rearrange the order in which the, the lesson is presented. So, but that is up all to the expertise of the teacher. Now, while there is nothing conceptually difficult in what will be, we will be talking about, if one is genuinely unfamiliar with the multi qualifications framework, so if you are not familiar with this and what this means, and and you know the interlinking and the progression, um, etc. Since I will be discussing 45 minutes on this, it may feel overwhelming if you are not familiar with that. 
So, um, so that is why every document shown is available online, and then one can familiarize oneself with it at one's time and at one's pace. So you can go through the material slowly and try to understand um, what is this is all about. So those are the four provisos. As I was saying, all resources mentioned are available through this link, copy, and I will be just pasting that link in the chat so that um, all of you can copy and paste it and have a record of that. That is the link to all the material we'll be using right now. So the lesson plan is planned for um, a double session. Um, the, the number of learners, of course, may vary, but definitely it is intended for form fives, year 11, year 10, it depends. Um, the aim is to expose and to teach students about and how to use and how and, and the reason why there is a multi qualifications framework and and its uses. Um, I don't know when I was applying for my job 25 years ago, there was no multi qualifications framework, so I didn't have this tool to help me analyze and find out which requirements and which qualifications I needed. And once I started those qualifications, what doors and what opportunities those qualifications opened. So now there is this tool. Unless we teach students how to use it, the tool remains useless if, if it remains on a shelf. And we do not want this tool to remain on the shelf, which is why we want to teach it to students. Technically, this is in line with the learning outcomes framework um, under the personal, social and career development subject. So there is one learning outcome which says, and this is that learning outcome that we are addressing today, I can plan and discuss possible career options and paths. And the major tool that will help students to plan possible career options and career paths is their understanding of the multi qualifications framework. Um, so, um, the learning outcome that I am trying to reach for my students through this lesson plan is I can discuss possible career options and paths through the use of the multi qualifications framework. So, the rest is bureaucracy. Um, this is, of course, linked also to the official uh, syllabus, at least the one used in state schools. Um, anticipated difficulties. It could be the case that in some classes, students may find some of the vocabulary used. Uh, they will, they may find it new. It depends on the level of the class. Of course, the the lesson can be conducted in either language. Uh, in fact, the main resource, the main uh, textbook prepared for this. Um, there is a Maltese version and there is an English version. So that was done to make sure that language is, no, is not a barrier here. Um, so the lesson is designed in a way so that no task except one is more than seven minutes long. Um, we all know that um, learners get bored very easily and one of the best ways to keep them engaged is um, for them to, it is for us to diversify the activities. The, the less time we give them to get bored, the more engaged and the more motivated they'll remain and the more they will learn. So this is all very familiar to all of you. Teaching resources, you would need an interactive whiteboard for this lesson, uh, a picture of the multi qualifications framework. So picture, when I say picture, it's uh, organigram of this. Well, okay. Mela, copies of the booklet, which is which is here. The booklet is also available online. 
Um, let me just. So it's it's not a huge booklet. So this is it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten pages. Uh, but there is all the information one would need to pass on to students. So that's the booklet. Um, you would need different call for applications because there is an activity that uses them. Um, there are some uploaded online from you know what we found on the internet. Um, ideally, the teacher tries to find um, their own um, call for applications, it, depending on jobs that you may think students may be interested in. The more relevant the lesson and the material we use, the better, of course, as we all know, um, the outcome and the success rate of the lesson. So lesson instructions here. I'm starting 8 a.m. in the morning. Um, the teacher shows the multi qualifications framework on the board on the interactive whiteboard. Which is this. And the teacher gives the student two minutes to. Evaluate, assess and try to understand what they are seeing. You may have some who um, who may be slightly familiar with it or a little and and probably foremost they would not be familiar with it. Um, the teacher can tell students uh, that she's fully aware that this is a very complex diagram and that she does not expect anyone um, to understand it completely. We don't want to dishearten them and we know we need to acknowledge that um, it is not an easy thing to understand at a glance. Um, at the upper side of the corner of the whiteboard, the teacher writes by the end of the lesson, you will start to understand what this diagram means and how to use it. This is for those of you who use, uh, who write, who share the learning intention with students. Some teachers do, some teachers don't. Uh, so this would be the learning intention here. And you explain to students, we're doing this lesson today because only by understanding the multi qualifications framework will you be able to decide accurately about your academic future. And you tell them that this is really important. So this is a little bit of a background. Um, to try to grab their attention. Some teachers, some don't, some do share the success criteria with students. Um, schools who have teaching policies where we try to make students independent learners usually uh, make sure that success criteria are shared with students. So um, this can be shared um, you will be you will enable them to assess their own learning by the end of the lesson. Uh, when you share with them, how will you know that you have achieved the objectives of this lesson? You will look at the diagram always referring to um, to this diagram, of course, and its elements and what the different elements stand for. So all the different sections, all the different levels, uh, the different amounts of ECTSs, etc. Teacher leaves the MQF at the, on the interactive whiteboard and refers to it as required. Um, this is a bit of a road map the multi qualifications framework and the lesson is an effort to try to describe this roadmap um, which is why it needs to remain on the board and you will need to refer to it very often so um, in the first activity um, you can introduce the lesson by watching this short video it's only one minute long but it is precisely on what we're trying um to talk about here so um we're going to watch it because as i said it's only one minute a qualifications framework is a tool that provides guidance on the order of qualifications according to the knowledge skills competences and the set of learning outcomes in Malta, this is known as the Malta Qualifications Framework, and it is used to make the local qualification system easier to understand, both at a national and international level. This system is designed to help you compare with international frameworks to promote quality, transparency, and mobility of qualifications in all types of education. 
The reference level of the MQF serves as a guide for students, employers, education providers, and any general public to understand what a learner with a qualification related to the MQF knows, understands, and is able to do. These are basic examples of titles of qualifications that may be achieved both in academic and vocational education. For more information regarding the Malta Qualifications Framework, please refer to the latest edition of the referencing report. The referencing report is not um, is a very technical report, so it's not students won't find this helpful. Um, but if one is interested to learn anything about the MQF, everything is in the referencing report. So um, it's a short video. It's a packed video. It could be that they need to watch it more than once. It could be that you need to explain some key vocabulary related to transparency, related to mobility, and you related to quality. So a teacher tries to elicit all the to elicit all the answers from learners according to the video clip. What is the MQF used for? And he gave us in the video clip there was listed a, um, a good list of uses of this uh, framework to promote transparency, to promote mobility, to help me make my choices, etc. So that's a short discussion that will set you the tone uh, for what's to come. Then the teacher distributes the booklet to all students. The booklet is available, of course. This is available in both Maltese and English. It talks about their journey. Um, from when they from where they are so we're talking about as we said year 11 and the possible options which they have in front of them in malta so it talks about the junior college it talks about mcast it talks about ips um it has links to the prospectus of these different educational institutions because there are um there there's an exercise later on linked to these there is a lot of helpful information there because this is what we want. Uh, essentially, this is what we're doing here. Career guidance. Um, going through perspective of prospective education institutions is uh, is one thing that is expected from form five students. To plan their future um, here, there are descriptions of what is the multi qualifications framework. Um, it's a referencing tool and it's there. There's an effort here to make it to describe it in as simple a way as possible. So this is. Specifically designed for students to understand, so it's it, it's, it's not difficult at all. As I already mentioned, there is a Maltese version. So. Teacher distributes the booklet, teacher gives two minutes uh, to learners to go through it and uh, flip it in their hands. Main explanation. The teacher reads selected abstracts from the booklet from pages one, two, three. Each time a qualification is mentioned, the teacher marks it on the MQF. So you use the booklet in a way to start introducing this idea that the multi qualifications framework in many ways is a roadmap. So um, that clarifies so, for example, if I'm talking about uh, the Institute for Tourism Studies specializes in provision of training in hospitality, it provides courses from level two to level seven. So we are already um, passing on the concept that there is a hierarchy of qualifications from level two to level seven. And through examples, we will teach the difference between uh, between a level six, which is a first degree, a level seven, which is a master's, a level three, which is a, what locally is called a no level, etc. The teacher uploads the booklet on the interactive whiteboard and clicks on the links on page two. The ones I show, I showed um, the links to the prospectus. Um, now, of course, the lesson diversifies depending on the tools. If you have a class where there are tablets available for everyone, um, you can use the tablets. If the students have access to technological devices, this part of the lesson can take place in the form of a group work. 
students can access the links themselves and explore accordingly. They can explore the prospectus of the, the, the different educational institutions available locally. Prospectus are intrinsically very interesting documents, very well designed, all of them. So usually it is quite, quite engaging. Mela, teacher explains what a prospectus is and goes through uh, some prospectus to, to, for example, you ask a student uh, which course are you interested in? Um, if you consider the offer from this particular institution and you find the course and you go through the, the requirements, uh, the value of that course, etc. Students are put in pairs and there is another activity here. Again, always related to finding different courses, finding different qualifications and understanding their value on the multi qualifications framework, the different levels. Level four is A levels, level five is um, diplomas, and there are different levels of diplomas. Um, while they are doing the task, the teacher goes around and explains, you know, where possible. Um, teacher uploads the booklet, and then there are different sections. When they start to get familiar with, with the framework, you can ask, um, considering yourself today as a Form 5 student, where would you place yourself on the MQF? So if I am in Form 5 um, reading for um, an O level in the upper streams, they would be moving towards because they wouldn't have obtained their O levels yet, their SEC certificates so they would be moving very close to level three technically they would still be at level two uh, in form five but they would be doing a level three uh, level of education and the certification once issued if they get the grades it will be of course uh, in level three another question where do you plan to be in three years time in relation to the MQ mqf what qualifications do you wish to hold they will all have, they won't all have actually a clear idea of their futures, but many of them will. And this is part of why we do such lessons, because we want those who have no, no idea to realize that their classmates, some of them have a pretty clear idea of what they want to achieve. And hopefully this stimulates them, stimulates every one of them to ask themselves, listen, you know, what, what is my vocation? Where do I want to go? What do I want to do when I grow up? That's a key question. Um, then uh, this is another section that you can teach. You, you, you wouldn't need to do this with everyone. Um, but but it, for example, this is a website where a local institution, the Institute of Education has a series of short courses. And through this website, so there are courses at level seven, courses at level six. By the way, these courses would interest you because they are all courses for teachers. Um, these short courses are level six and level seven. So this is the same level of, of a master's degree, but they are only five CTSs. And you can use this to explain that not all level seven courses are I don't know, the MTL, for example, at the University of Malta is a level seven course, but that is a course that is two years full time. Because it is a course of one to always TSS. While this course, a word in science and active citizenship, is, is, is equally a level seven course, so it will be equally difficult. But this is only six CTSs, and there's a huge difference between a course of six CTSs and then and another level seven course of 120 CTSs. The one for one to all is two years full time. This will only take a few weeks. So, and this is what we want to teach them. We want them to understand, learn to value different courses and learn to um, understand that, you know, that there are different courses and courses have different credit values, different levels and a different amount of time that is required to sit for a course. Mela, the lesson continues. The teacher distributes the class uh, into groups of three. The teacher uh, can call, uh, you can distribute call for applications and there are a series of questions that you can ask 
um, call for applications now are issued uh, in line with the multi qualifications framework. And you can ask, OK, so this is the job. What kind of qualification are they asking for? And then we'll be able to pinpoint, I don't know, a first degree of 1.8 OCTSS, or you need a first degree and and the master's degree of at least 90. And that is how they practice in using and getting familiar with understanding the differences between uh, different qualifications. Now, you, you after all the activities done, all of them in some way related to the Malta qualifications framework. You represent the picture, this to them, and you ask them, you know, is this a little bit more familiar now? Now, with some classes, you know, they get the hang of it and you wouldn't need to repeat the lesson another time. With some other classes, if they are interested, um, you may need to invent other ways to help them practice and get familiar with all the details uh, within the multi qualifications framework. Um, the lesson also includes some homework. There are other videos, very well made videos by the MFHEA available online. You know, and then so you ask them to watch the video. Do you think that the higher the level, the more difficult the course or qualification becomes? This is exactly what that video explains. And the answer to this question will prove that he made a little bit of extra work. Um, and then there are other, there's another task that you can try with, um, with the class. So basically this is the, the lesson plan. As I was saying, it's a collection of activities and teaching resources that teachers who are teaching PSCD, career guidance, and or if you're working in voluntary in the voluntary area and you there are there is a lot of this that happens for example in youth centers where we try to help students um you know to 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 do their career choice and to understand um and to use this as a tool to help them make the choice that is right for them